Good evening from the Vicarage Garden, St Cuthbert's Church in Shotley Bridge. I'm Martin Jackson. I'm the vicar of the parish of St Cuthbert Benfield side and priest in charge of the parish of St John the Evangelist Castleside, two parishes in northwest County Durham. It's good to be able to join anyone who's with me now live or maybe watching on catch up when hopefully I'll be able to post this video. It's early evening and early evening of the fifth Sunday of Lent, which we know traditionally as Passion Sunday, the beginning of Passion Tide, those two weeks which will take us into Holy Week and then through it, through the Last Supper celebrated by Jesus with his disciples on to Good Friday and his death on the cross until finally on Easter Day, two weeks time, we shall celebrate the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. The last video that I posted was one for use in Lent, this one Passion Sunday and Passion Tide. So there's a different theme to it, though much of what you'll find has the same sense of discipline, of self-denial, of looking to our Lord while things still may seem dark. Today though is a day of light, it's good that the sun has come up. I invite you now to join with me. Perhaps you can hear the sounds of evening around us. And hear wood pigeons in the background. The twittering of many birds. The garden itself is becoming a place of activity, particularly for the squirrels which keep leaping around all over the place. You can see behind me that the daffodils are starting to come out in bloom. There's still some berries on the bush as well that's behind me and a lot of work to be done in this garden as well. If you're wanting to follow the order of service, you can find it more or less on the Church of England's uh, website for night prayer on, uh, in Passion Tide, or uh, else on the Church of England's daily prayer app. I'm using a form that's found in the Franciscan office book, uh, which was the inspiration, in fact, for modern forms of the Anglican office. Uh, there's a slight difference in I think just one of the verses. But as well, uh, Passion Sunday this year is the 17th of March, which of course many people will know better as St. Patrick's Day. So I'll give a reference to him. Remind you now uh, that he was born in Great Britain. His associations, of course, are with Ireland. We're not quite sure where he grew up. Some people say as far south as Cornwall. Others may place him in Wales. Others as far north as the west coast of Scotland and still others would say Cumbria, or maybe even a little further inland, which brings him really quite close to where we are in northwest Durham. Who knows? We know that he was born about the year 385. He was taken captive to Ireland as a slave and worked as a herdsman. He writes of the sense of desolation that he had so much of the time, until finally he was able to escape. He finds himself in Gaul, modern-day France. There he seems to receive something of an education. He's ordained, he comes back to Britain. But then he's made a bishop and he goes back to Ireland to the people who'd made him a slave, but so that he might preach with them the gospel that they may find a new freedom in Christ. Many, we know, are converted through his preaching. He's important as well for organizing the church so that it's fit for mission. It's thought that he died about the year 461 and he's buried at Dan Patrick. I'll read to you a little later something of what he has to say of his life, of his calling, of his ministry. And now, let's seek peace in God's presence. There's something of the peace that we find here The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Keep a time now for silence, for reflection, on the day that's passing. And particularly to our causes for thanksgiving. we shared with others that's been good, the experience we have of care from others, 
of love put into practice. Recognize too our failings, shortcomings of which we're aware, our causes for regret. In the midst of that, we seek the forgiveness and mercy of God through the love he makes known in Christ. Some words of confession. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your spirit and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray, that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. To you, O saving three in one, let homage due by all be done, and grant us by the cross restored to share the victor's great reward. Amen. Psalm appointed for this evening is part of Psalm 139, first 18 verses. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. Your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night, even darkness is no darkness with you. The night is clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth, your hands beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written, as day by day they were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I count them, they are more in number than the sand, and at the end I am still in your presence. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. A reading appointed for use in Passion Tide from the prophet Zechariah. I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that when they look on the one whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child, 
and weep bitterly over him, as one weeps over a firstborn. A responsory. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. The Song of Simeon, known traditionally as the Nunc Dimittis. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. I said that as well as today being Passion Sunday, it's also the feast of the great Bishop St. Patrick. I've given you a very short biographical sketch. He himself records something of his life, but more than that, he reflects on what it means to him to be a Christian, to know something of the vicissitudes of life, but to know nevertheless that God is with him and that it's worth it to be his follower. He looks to one who dies on the cross and puts his own suffering into that context. These are words of his from his so-called confession. I give thanks to my God tirelessly, who kept me faithful in the day of trial, so that today I offer sacrifice to him confidently, the living sacrifice of my life to Christ, my Lord, who preserved me in all my troubles. I can say, therefore, who am I, Lord, and what is my calling, that you should cooperate with me with such divine power? Today, among heathen peoples, I praise and proclaim your name in all places, not only when things go well, but also in times of stress. Whether I receive good or ill, I return thanks equally to God, who taught me always to trust him unreservedly. His answer to my prayer inspired me in these latter days to undertake this holy and wonderful work in spite of my ignorance and to imitate in some way those who, as the Lord foretold, would preach his good news as a witness to all nations before the end of the world. How did I come by this wisdom, which was not my own, I who neither knew what was in store for me, nor what it was to relish God? What was the source of the gift I got later, the great, and beneficial gift of knowing and loving God, even if it meant leaving my homeland and my relatives. I came to the Irish heathens to preach the good news and to put up with insults from unbelievers. I heard my mission abused. I endured many persecutions, even to the extent of chains. I gave up my freeborn status for the good of others. Should I be worthy, I'm ready to give even my life, promptly and gladly, for his name. And it is there that I wish to spend it until I die, if the Lord should graciously allow me.
So there's Patrick, who's been kidnapped, who's been made a slave, who's been caused much suffering, who manages to escape, who finds his way to freedom again. But he recognizes that that freedom really needs to be lived out in the life of Christ. So he goes back voluntarily to a people who'd made him a slave. He's willing there to suffer. He faces up to heathen kings as a great context, uh, a great contest at Easter, when it's said that he kindled the fire at Tara, despite having been forbidden by the pagan chieftains. Life is more than a contest, of course. But so often we look to our own causes for complaint, the things that we might count as our own suffering. And it is maybe that we need to see who suffers with us. Bear in mind those who know their own lack of freedom, people who still live as slaves, whether in other lands or in the context of modern slavery in our own country. People who long for freedom, who find themselves hemmed in by fear. Those who are captives because of the violence of others, because of war. So now let's make our prayer for them. Let's pray particularly for people who are caught up in war, especially in the Holy Land. And we'll pray next Sunday, Palm Sunday, for those who still make of Jerusalem a battleground. We think of those people in Gaza, people on the verge of starvation, people without the health care they need, people who've lost their homes, people particularly who've lost loved ones. Think of those who've been lost as hostages, praying for their safety, for their release, for freedom for all, for a desire to look for a proper freedom for all peoples established with justice. Pray for people in Ukraine, the onslaught that they know. For the people of Russia on this final day of their presidential election. Pray for our own nation. in remembrance first of St. Patrick, the collect for this, his feast day. Almighty God, who in your providence chose your servant Patrick to be the apostle of the Irish people, keep alive in us the fire of the faith he kindled and strengthen us in our pilgrimage towards the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray in this season of Passion Tide that we may grow closer to Christ, even as he makes his journey that will take him to the cross. Almighty God, as we stand at the foot of the cross of your Son, Help us to see and know your love for us, so that in humility, love and joy, we may place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And a prayer for this night. Light in our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we come to the ending of the day, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, this video has gone live totally unannounced, but it's been good nevertheless to be joined by one or two people, maybe more, in the course of the video going out. I seek to save it both to our Facebook pages and also to YouTube. But now I wish you a good night and the rest of this day, or whenever you may be taking part in the prayer of this video in future days. May God bless us, that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. Amen. And may God bless you.